putting this as well. Hi, um, good evening and welcome to another edition of Ventura and Friends. Um, with me tonight, I'm delighted to welcome Arun Mera. Arun uh, is a chartered accountant by training. Um, he trained at PwC and he spent um, quite a long time, 17 years so far, helping dentists with various aspects of their business and their personal finances. So Arun um, is fairly intimately entwined with the dental industry. He owns the Neem Tree Dental Group based in London and Surrey. Um, and he's the owner and CEO of business advisors, um, chartered accountants, commercial finance brokers, and importantly, the Samira Reliance, which is a dental buying group. Arun, uh, you're, you're very welcome. So welcome to, um, welcome to Dentura and Friends. Um, you join us at quite an interesting time. Um, you know, the, the, the economy is not looking any better. People's taxation position isn't, isn't going to get any better in their lifetime from what I'm, from what I'm hearing. Yep. Um, there's a lot of doom and gloom out there for, for dentists. So any good news for us this evening? Uh, well, I'm going to try and paint some good news this evening, Kevin. So thank you for the introduction. Um, you're right. There is plenty of things to get negative about, but at the same time, there's plenty of opportunity out there. Um, in my opinion, as I, as I talk to many clients dotted around the country. So if I, if I, before I go into some of the tips I'm going to talk to you about tonight, um, you, you're seeing two different camps of dentists out there, really, what I'm seeing. You're seeing the um, more agile, entrepreneurial dentists emerging, uh, which, have, which have emerged over the last four or five years, but prior to the pandemic, but I think the pandemic has even exacerbated that further. So we're seeing many, many, um, particularly in the private sector, um, do very very well okay yeah. very strongly um so for them it's not doom and gloom at all it's actually very positive right um yet there are people worried about particularly in the nhs sector worried about what's going to happen with the nhs uh, i had a call with a client just this afternoon saying that he's thinking of leaving the nhs it's too much hassle for what it's worth he just wants to do more private and i think that's still keen to be it's coming a recurring theme um however you cannot as you say rest on your laurels um we're in a, an environment where inflation is rising, um, costs for everything are rising from consumables to utilities to you name it, okay? Um, and good old Rishi Sunak and the Treasury are after every penny that you, he can get, okay? Because the government is effectively broke. They spent, I think it was 37 billion or something silly like that, just on- um, oh, it was track and trace, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, track and trace, exactly. So um, he's got a lot of money just to get back. Absolutely. So how are you going to do that? He's going to raise taxes. So we've got the talk, the talk of national insurance rising later this year. Corporation tax changes will happen next year. It's, um, yeah, it's a tougher you're environment. Not, you're not making many happier. No, no. Good. Okay, well, let me, let me kind of, <laughs> then, on that note, let me move into some tips that I've kind of, just right. put together very loosely, very quickly in terms of what I see in the world um, and where, where I think people can be adding value to their businesses ultimately. Okay, so let me let me go. I hope you can see these slides. Um, yeah, yeah, I can see them. Okay, so as you mentioned earlier, my, my name is Aaron and um, I've been working with dentists for 17, 18 years now. Um, I married a dentist and that's kind of how I fell into this whole arena. Prior to that, I was an investment banker and married Smita and my world literally changed overnight, okay? I'm still married to her and um, yeah, it's been an interesting 18 years. We've seen all sorts and sorts and uh, sorts of things. Um, so while advising dentists through the Samara business as accountants and tax advisors, as business advisors and finance, I've also had the privilege of running private dental clinics with my wife Smita. Um, and we had up to one point, we had five private clinics in the London Southeast area and we've got one in Wandsworth, um, used to have one in Canary Wharf, used to have one on Fleet Street, Notting Hill Gate, so all, all over the place. And it really um, has given me a real insight to what works and more importantly, what doesn't work, okay? So, and a lot of that information we kind of pass on to our clients. Um, so it's been exciting. I don't, sorry, I yeah, meant to yeah. mention at the beginning because I'm, I'm sure. hopeless at doing this. Yeah. If anyone's got any questions as we go, by the way, please do put them in the chat box or, and we'll pick them up as we go or, or we'll pick them up at the end. Sorry, yeah. Renny, go on. That's, that's fine, that's fine. So, yeah, we've got, just give me a second. I'm just checking this going, working, right? Yeah, so I think we've got a lot of experience in our team and we've seen everything. But in truth, we've made a lot of mistakes along the way as well, okay? So 
Um, and we learn from those mistakes and then we impart that knowledge and um, experience to everybody as well. So let's move on. So what I've done today, I've, I've put together some um, quick money and tax saving tips and uh, hopefully you'll get an idea of where I'm coming from. I'll keep them short and sweet, but it's an, it just frames the, the key points I want to get, get, get across today. So in a practice, um, if you look at a profit and loss account, I won't go into too much detail and put you to sleep. There are a whole bunch of costs in a practice. You have staff costs, people like nurses, receptionists, associate costs. You have your other overheads, such as um, your kind of utility bills, material costs, lab costs. So as you can see, and as you probably already know, dental practice has a lot of costs. People might, and, I, and quite often they're not, people always, always think, oh, dentists make lots of money, they do very well. Okay, well, on the top line, dentists do generate quite well, but it, many dentists do generate a lot of high-end turnover. But at the same time, to actually generate that turnover, there's a lot of costs that have to come into play staff, associates, regulatory costs, insurances, you name it, okay? Right. So if you can squeeze those costs lower, even by a little bit, that can actually have quite a significant difference to your profitability. And ultimately, if your profitability is bigger, then the value of your practice is bigger. And when you come to selling it in five, 10, 15, 20 years, you'll ultimately get a better value of the business. So if you can save money somewhere in your business, it's starting to look at each of the lines kind of identified, identified here. So I'm going to just go through just a few areas that I'm going to touch on now. So one area is um, financing. OK, now me as a, a finance person, I work in commercial finance. Um, you can borrow money at different rates and ultimately you want to try and get the best terms out there. Now, so it's important to shop around and get someone to help you understand what are the different rates. Now, not just on terms of finance when you're buying a practice, but let's say you wanted to buy an ITRO machine. Yeah, that might cost you 30, 35,000 pounds from memory. And it's worthwhile shopping around what type of deal, what over what period of time are you gonna buy that over? And at what interest rates you're gonna do it at? Okay, well, borrow at, not do it at, silly words. Borrow to borrow at. And um, that, will then determine what your monthly outgoing will be. Now, if you can cut that down by 50 quid a month, that will have what, a saving of 600 pounds in your profits. It will increase your profits by 600 pounds each year. So look around and talk to someone like a broker, like ourselves, where they can shop around and get you the best financial deal that's out there. In addition, I unfortunately see a lot of dentists who have a lot of short-term debt. Um, many dentists I've met over the years spend a lot, not necessarily on their own practice, but on personal items, cars, holidays, et cetera. And that accumulates short-term debt. And the short-term debt, ID, which is typically credit card debt, is expensive. So if you've got a large credit card debt, I cannot, I cannot stress how important it is to try and refinance that as quickly as possible at, at a lower rate. So that may mean releasing equity against your practice um, or your house, but which would ultimately save you money. So financing is so, so important and getting at the right terms. Now, one of the points I will talk to you a little bit about later, but I'll mention it here now. If you actually run a business for a limited company up until 2020, 2023, there's something that the government put into place called the super deduction um, tax break or on capital allowances. So if you spent £100 on a piece of equipment, a capital equipment, you can use get 130% of that, i.e. £130 as a deduction gets your profitability, which ultimately produces your tax liability. But that's only in a limited company and it's only up until April 2023. There are various caveats and things around it, but just put sowing that seed of thought into your mind here now. Does that demand of interest? Does that work with LLPs as well? No, it'll just be a limited company. Limited companies, okay. Limited companies, okay. So that's financing costs, okay. Another thing that's on everyone's mind, it was certainly was on everyone's mind during COVID. Um, there's going to be a revaluation. The, re the original revaluation um, has been delayed till 2023 um, on business rates. Now, due, due to COVID, um, it was going to happen in 2021, but now it's been delayed to 2023. So now if you, if you, if, you, if the, the key thing here really is make sure in 2023, you get your rates revalued. So you hassle your valuation office. Okay. Rents as a whole have fallen. Okay. And rates are always based on the rent rental value of, of a property or rental value of an area. So, in, in theory, your rates should drop and you need to argue that case and get in touch with your valuation office to do that. And this will then have a hopefully a bottom line um, positive impact on your profits. OK, so 
sowing that sort of um, seed here today as well. Um, staff, yeah, hiring, 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 hiring. Now, I, I, I having owned dental practices and seeing my wife who deals with lots of um, staffing issues all the time and, and her own businesses, when you're hiring people, hiring people is the hardest thing I find, okay? Hiring the right people. Um, you hire someone, the interview, they're perfect, but sometimes it doesn't really go to plan. But that's that's life, okay? I mean, at the moment, but, sorry, at the moment, it's it's also very expensive to hire, though, isn't it? I mean, we're seeing huge wage inflation. Correct, correct, correct. And you don't really you're seeing huge wage inflation. Um, we're seeing people leave the industry as well, okay? As because of um, they don't want to work in dentistry anymore, that that type of thing. Um, so the best thing is to try and retain the staff that you have got who are good okay that's the first kind of rule rule of thumb but then if you have to hire someone i'd be quite rigorous in your hiring process and question and pro pro probe um and make sure you've got that person going to fit well into your team and deliver on what they said they're doing okay um recruitment fees we get approached by recruiters all the time um, negotiate those fees in advance know what you're going to be paying what the what the, 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 the bill will be if you do take someone on board and I'd have performance-based criteria in there as well. So rather than having a one large fixed salary, say, okay, I'll give you a base salary, but if you get involved and do X, Y, Z, I'll give you a bonus as well. So have that incentive kind of incentive placed into the, into yeah. the, into the payment um, or salary, okay? So important because that will incentivizes people to, to do better, work harder, et cetera, et cetera. So hire properly. Um, oh, then associate pay. Now, this is this has been a, something I've been talking about for years, okay, since I ever started in dentistry almost 20 years ago. And if you look at models in America, people pay 30, 35% of turnover to their associates here. Quite often or not, we're still paying, paying people paying 50%, okay, of, of what they generate. Now, I think the key thing here has to be is, is it 40% of 1,000 or 50% of 750 as an example I've put here, okay? Um, if you can, if you your, if you've developed a beautiful practice and it's in the right area and you you've got good team people and it, it delivers well, then your fees firstly should be higher, okay? And you should you can then argue with the associate coming in. Well, I've put all this infrastructure in place. I've done the website. I've done everything, okay? Um, I need to be. Um, I can only afford to pay forty percent, okay, of what you generate. So. It's about having those conversations. So I know our clinics, for example, we our clinics are in pretty nice areas, okay, and pretty affluent parts of London and Surrey, and our associates are paid anything between forty and forty-five percent, um, and we split the lab bill fifty percent. Um, do we get some pushback when people interview? Yes, we do sometimes, and if they don't like it, we'll say, okay, well, that we're not going to change it for you. This is our model. This is how it works, okay. Um, what they tend to find the ways who do join us realize that oh my god 40 percent of a thousand is certainly much better than 50 percent of 750 mm -hmm. um and they they take home pretty good good pretty good incomes okay yeah, it's quite powerful yeah so it's important to um get that um balance right okay um and then and and if they're proving them what they're waiting gold and they're doing more and more and getting um if they, if, they, if they can generate really bigger fees, then maybe, yeah, okay, I'll put it up to 45%. I might even put it up to 50% if there's loyalty, but they have to prove themselves, okay? So, yeah, look at associate pay. Next one, what have I got here? Right, digitization, okay? So this is something that's um, kind of everywhere at the moment. Um, obviously, when you get a digital scanner, and like the ITRO, like um, I think the Prime Scan, various options on um, 3Shape, um, obviously there's no impression material which again is a saving okay um but it's the workflow that ultimately improves so there's 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 so much going on in the digital world in, in dentistry um and i know clinics where literally they have the scanner um information gets sent down to the lab downstairs in the in the same building the lab technician creates the does the work okay and within the hour it's upstairs back in the clinic okay all being um, placed into, into the patient's mouth so the technology is there, okay. Um, the patients like this. It's convenient. Um, it's quick. Um, but at the same time, you need to be moving the whole workflow of your whole business, of your whole practice, of your whole team down this way. Uh, it's not an overnight thing, but I can see this is happening. And this will certainly save you money, okay, over the long term. If you buy the right equipment, as I mentioned earlier, if you're in a limited company, you can get claim capital allowances on it, which can also reduce your tax bill. So it can be a win-win on many levels here. So 
just throw that throwing that into the into the ring as well. Okay. Um, right, stock ordering another way to save money. Um, it's quite self-explanatory here, um, but ultimately have a stock ordering system in place. Identify what you need and only order what you need. I've seen, I've going to clinics sometimes and I see boxes upon boxes upon boxes of stuff that's been ordered and it's not even being used. It's just, it's going to become redundant and obsolete. So it's important that you have someone who's responsible for the ordering and they only order what they need. And at the same time, they're, share, they're comparing prices against many, many um, suppliers because it's, it varies so greatly. Okay. So I, I know um, we, we, we've started our buying group in the last, what, six, seven months ago. And we've seen the prices of gloves gloves that they were vary from 12.99 down to 7.99 depending on who you go to okay for a box of 200 gloves it's a huge vast thing now if you think about the number of gloves that dentist is going through um that can add up very quickly so um in addition one of the other things some of the companies allow you to order online if you do order online you'll save again one and a half two percent on your um on your order as well so look and shop around um in in terms of your stock ordering and have a good system in place <laughs> that's one of the one of the big advantages that the um i guess that the corporates have is they can do that bulk buying correct so, so what have you done with that have you, you've got a buying group yeah yeah, 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 yeah. so what we started off about six months ago we've got something called the um, samara alliance which you rebranded recently and it's out it's right. basically a buying group so we've 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 we, ne we, ne we negotiate better terms on a on a group basis for the independent and dentist so if we've got a dentist in cheshire a dentist in manchester a dentist in surrey a dentist in london i'm effectively going to this to these companies and saying right i've got all these people on my books okay they what can you do for us we're not a corporate what can you do for us if we're if they're going to put all their business through you what are the best, best terms right. you can do whether it's consumables, whether it's utility, whether it's IT equipment, whether it's um, uh, digital equipment, all these things, okay? okay? So, and that's working really, really well. We're starting to get some really good traction. Um, people are saving, firstly, people are saving money. They're getting, um, being made aware of new products and services that which they may they not have been before. Um, and ultimately it's a win-win. So it, that's our buying group. And it's called the Samara Alliance. I'll send you a link later. But one of the things it's, it costs the basic but service is 50 pounds a month okay however first two months are free you can test it out if you don't think you're saving your money you can cancel it anytime but virtually everyone who's joined it is continuing because they're saving ultimately money well good we can put, we can put something up about that and let people know. sure thank you thank you um so paperless um again i've seen too many clinics over the years where they're those brown little things paper sitting in clinics um been there for the last 30 years first thing that has to happen is they need to go paperless and if you're starting up a clinic it goes without saying that you have to be a paperless practice okay um first it'll save money on storage printing paper um and also going being being an accountant i've just mentioned that here going forward in the next by 2024 which i'll talk to you about shortly everything's going to have to be on digital okay so making tax digital is coming into play in 2024 and therefore all your records will need to be kept um, on a digital format and rather than doing a tax return once a year you're going to have to do have the pleasure of doing a tax return four times a year okay so um that stress is not just once a year it's four times so lucky old us we're going to have to deal with all that okay mm -hmm. but therefore going paperless and organizing your affairs now as opposed to in 2024 is just going to save you time money and hassle down the road okay and you can get your systems implemented now right. okay so going paperless is important um, utility bills yeah now this has been in the news i think forever and if, if unfortunately we go to war um yeah. i think our utility bills will go even higher <laughs> okay but uh, yeah, exactly. yeah let's pray it doesn't happen like that um but but a few things that we can do in the meantime is just get your staff involved um have notices or ask them to make sure that the lights turn off every day, the heating's turned off every day, the aircon's turned off each day. Just have them on the, on the doors or on the walls before things are closing, when you, before closing out. It's a simple thing, but it gets into people's minds. And once they eventually do it, you could be saving a few pounds a day. OK, um, definitely, definitely ensure you review your contract and shop around for a better deal. Um, we work with a partner in our buying group and they basically save people around 34 percent on the utility costs. OK, so if you're interested, just 
join the buying group and we can put you in touch with them and start seeing how you can save money. Um, it's so, so important. Utility costs, I don't think are going to go down. They're going to be going up for, a, for the foreseeable future. Um, so get, 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 get organized in this respect. Yeah, it applies to all of us, I guess, but. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, yeah, it's not just dental practices, it's our, it's our homes as well. Absolutely. Yeah. The homes as well. Um, right, yeah, check. This, this goes down to servicing, really. Okay, now something, something that my, um, who was it? My, someone at the dentist told me this before. He says the most expensive dent thing in the dental surgery is when the dentist chair goes down. And that's so true, okay? Because you cannot generate that income coming through the surgery. You've still got all your fixed overheads. You've still got to pay your staff. You've still got to pay everything. So it's so, so important to make sure you have a service plan in place so that things never break down um, and making sure that it's up to CQC compliance. Um, and so therefore, I'm just trying to highlight, set up a service contract to ensure your equipment is serviced regularly. So then you can keep working that chair because that chair is your biggest generator okay for your practice okay um if it goes down you ain't got no money in okay yeah. simple 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 but effective and then go moving on to tax and this is kind of an area that obviously i've been dealing with for the last 20 years but um i suppose the first two points really are stressing what i mentioned earlier getting organized now this this is something that i find so many dentists find difficult um getting their affairs organized in a organized manner because the last thing their accountant and on truth be told wants to see is a box of papers arriving in their offices and having to look through it no one's none of my no new accountant or junior accountant or anyone in their 20s or 30s is even going to look at it and say i'm not doing that i'm not touching that the, what days of that are over everything has to be digitized okay so therefore it's about getting organized so we need to make sure you're on a bookkeeping package initially straight away something like zero or um or quickbooks online one of those ones um, and making sure that the bookkeeping is happening monthly or quarterly, because um, that then gets things organized, which can then prepare the accounts on time, which then can help um, prepare the taxation bills on time, and then submissions can happen. So if I look in truth, the clients that do that, their tax returns have been done months ago. There are now, we've got a few clients who are still pending to submit as we speak right now at the, towards the tail end of February, because it turns up in boxes, um, and it's not, it's not organised. It's and uh, it's it's going to be put to the bottom of the pile. That's the world we that's the world we live in, I guess. So, and this this all leads to something called making tax digital, which the government are introducing. Um, so, for income tax purposes from twenty twenty four, as I mentioned, you'll have to if you're earning over ten grand per year, you're going to have to be making quarterly submissions, um, which just makes things imperative or makes it imperative that you um, go digital now. OK. Um, similarly, I mentioned this earlier, the limited companies, make sure you if you're buying equipment and you're a limited company, you buy it before April 2023, you will save around 100. Well, you'll have a deduction of 130 percent on what you buy, um, which is a huge incentive. So if you're looking to expand your business over the next 12 to 8, well, eight 12 to 24 months, front load and spend the money now. OK. Don't wait till after April 2023 because it won't be so tax advantageous for you. And then at the same time, and this is an easy one, but utilize all your possible tax allowances. Okay. Um, make sure you're contributing to your ISA each year. Okay. Make sure you're using your pension allowance of £40,000 per year if you're not using it. Um, can that, can, that can be an, an offset against your incomes in your company. Okay. So there are various things out there. And I'm just trying to highlight these things for you to think about um, today. Um, so how can we help? Um, there's a few areas that we can help in. Um, we've got three primary websites. Okay. Um, the Samara website is our kind of home website and there's a ton of information with a learning center on all aspects of running, managing a dental clinic. Um, and we have over 500 of dentists who are our accountancy related clients. Um, we also then have the Samara Alliance, which I mentioned earlier, which is our new website for the buying group. And as I mentioned, you can sign up there today. It's two months um, free. Um, you can try it out and hopefully you'll find that you're saving money pretty soon, pretty quickly. And then you can ultimately carry on. OK, and then for raising finance, we have just developed our new app. And again, you can apply, apply online whether you're trying to buy a 10 grand piece of equipment or whether you're trying to raise a million pounds to buy a practice. It's all done using technology on there for you to um, 
be able to apply for finance. So I will just share these actually now in the chat, I hope, if that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. I think that went, did that go up? I'm not sure what you can see. Can you still see my slides or? Still see the slide, yeah. Okay, so that's the Samara Alliance. Uh, there we are. I'll just share Samara Finance. Is that gonna work? No. I'll just, I'll just share the Samara one actually, just that one. Yeah, no problem. We can put that up on the site as well afterwards. Okay, so yeah, so what where where well, just to wrap up um so if you're in the market to have a chat with a new potentially new business advisor or accountant my team um we've got a great team of all, all sorts and shapes and sizes and experiences um who can help um we offer a free initial consultation where we can help you discussing potential ideas to save tax or raise finance at lower rates or by joining the buying group um, you can book it all on the samara.co.uk website um, via Calendly call. We have a lot of evening calls with clients, um, which works very well. So we know dentists are working during the day. Alternatively, just ping me an email at rm at and uh, I'll be delighted to help. Okay. That's really helpful. That's really That's helpful. Right. No worries. Um, we, did, we did have a, a question that came in before, actually, which was about, I don't know if really this, if this fits into your um your bailiwick as it were but it was about it comes into our world it's around self-employed status and it comes into our world and, and around vicarious liability and the, the mm. vicarious liability that can attach to practice owners and we've had a recent court decision on that which was which was helpful in the mm. rattan case um but you're just an opinion on it i mean it seems like the revenue is trying to go after anybody that is self-employed and 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 push them into an employed position and and you know from a practice owner's point of view you know that that would be a significant change to the business model i mean do you do you have any any thoughts on that it's probably a webinar in itself that one but any well there's there's so many schools of thought here what's going to happen and how it's going to happen kevin um you're right it's, it's down to the if an associate is effectively working full-time in a clinic um are they are, are they uh, deemed to be an employee ultimately i think if you look at um, this is going back to my kind of studying days, and that sounds terrible, but is the employer the master and is the associate the slave? Is that kind of basic um, and look at when it comes to employment law, I believe, from memory? Okay, yeah. and, and that's how HMRC look at it. So we have to think, um, does, the, does the associate have the ability to um, turn down business? Does the associate have the ability to choose his holidays when they want to have the holidays? Now, this is probably more of a lawyer thing than a... Yes. HMRC thing, but you're right. HMRC are trying to pigeonhole people down that route, and I, I expect with how the environment is tax-wise, okay, I'm pretty certain it's going to go more that way, okay. So yeah. therefore, employers will employ dentists. Um, therefore, the percentages I was talking to about earlier will probably fall further um, because it's the risk on the employer further. Um, yeah. So there were, I think there'll be unhappy parties on both sides, associates as well as um, practice owners. Um, it's worked yeah. quite well to date, but yeah, we're in this. Yeah, that's the way that, that's the way it seems to be flowing at the moment. And I think the I think we, again that was a question I think we brought up with um, with Sarah Buxton at FTA Law. She was talking about the contractual position and what what practice owners can do to protect themselves. But you know, it's, it's trying to put some clear blue water between employed and self-employed status, which you know isn't always easy and, and no. as you say the wind is blowing in that direction Indeed. Okay. <laughs> that's helpful um okay well look i mean if anyone's got any questions please feel free just to um uh, to contact us uh, either 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 to contact the rune or to contact us at uh, at densura um sure. but i think you know for now i'm really grateful for that i think there's some there's some very useful advice in some quite dark days <laughs> I hope we've I hope we've ended on a much better note. It seems like there's some there's some simple things that can be done to just improve one's position, but it just takes a bit like everything else takes a bit of forward planning. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Kevin. I think you're right. And it takes us sometimes just taking a step back and looking at what you're doing and what are your objectives financially, what you want to do. Um, and then there's it's about picking up the phone and having a chat with different people with different experts. And if we don't have the right expert in our team, I, I pretty much know the right people who can put you in touch with. Okay. Um, whether it's certain tax, tax specialists or whether it's certain unemployment specialists or whatever. Yeah. So um, 
we're lucky enough to have colleagues and friends like yourselves, okay, to be to be able to point people people in the right direction. So, yeah, if, if anyone needs any help, just drop me an email and we'll be delighted to be to help. Great stuff. Okay. Well, look, Aaron, thank you again, and to everyone, yeah. have a uh, have a great evening. Yeah. Thanks. Have a good evening. Bye bye. Bye now.